Hello, welcome back to what Jack has made. In this video, I'm going to be going over styled components and how you can use it in conjunction with your Gatsby experience and your Gutenberg blocks. So to best illustrate this, I'm going to be showing you my hero component. And this component in React is being passed in a couple of props from our ACF fields, including background color, the content, uh, whether or not to use a duotone effect and what image or media to implement in the hero. So we're going to be focusing specifically on the background color property. So I'm console logging this to our site. I'm just booting up uh, Gatsby. So give me a couple of seconds and I'll show you what we're currently logging. Cool. So if I open up my page, it's slightly um, terrible because this is just an example. But um, if we open up our console log, you can see we're getting a hash uh, value, which is a hex color value. And that is 4706C9. And if we go into our WordPress editor, you can see this is the hero component on the home page, and we can change the color in the color picker to say a green, which might not look great. And if we give Gatsby a couple of seconds, because I've up the refe uh, refetch interval or refresh interval, I can't remember which one it was, um, in our data source to every 15 seconds, we should see the purple change to green, which we do. And yeah, it, it's kind of magic because you can use WordPress now to completely customize the editing experience without having to write inline styles. This is a before pseudo um, selector. So it's impossible to write an inline style for a pseudo selector. Um, but we're able to use the background color that we're pulling in as a prop to influence the styles of our components. And that's the benefit of styled components. So what is a styled component? Well, I'll show you the component which we're using to generate the color. We've got the hero media component, which is a styled div. And when we reference this in our hero component here, essentially what this does is in our React application, it renders a div with a class which has all of these styles applied to it. And this is beneficial for a couple of reasons. Number one, it keeps all of the CSS very specific and um, kept apart from the rest of the system. So you could argue that that's kind of the opposite of what CSS is meant to be. CSS is meant to scale, but this keeps um, sort of component, component focused development um, very tight and very clean. And another benefit is that the CSS will only render when the component is called. So if you don't have a hero component on the page, you don't need the CSS for that. And so the code splitting happens automatically on a component to component basis. Uh, so this is all the CSS for that div, but you can see that within the div, we've got a media query, which I've created, which looks at the uh, medium or larger devices. So a tablet or larger. And if we're on a tablet or larger, we have a pseudo class, um, which creates a, um, a block element, which acts as the overlay. And within this, we've got a background attribute, which we're using props to influence. So we're saying using the syntax dollar curly braces props arrow, we now have access to all the props being passed into that component. So background and overlay are being passed in. And so we could access props.background or props.overlay. And then based on the values we're passed, we can dynamically generate CSS. Um, by here, I'm using a tunerary operator which says if props.background is um, passed into this component, then use that. If not, fall back to our primary color, which is defined in a theme file. And this is essentially a CSS variables file, which gets passed into all of our components because I'm wrapping all of my pages in a theme provider. Now, this episode isn't a tutorial on style components because I feel like that deserves its own series, but this is just to give you an example of how you can use the Gutenberg editor 
and ACF fields to influence how you render CSS on the fly and how beneficial it is. So if my client wanted a pink overlay on their hero, they can go ahead and change pink. And I don't need to write a specific class for it or create utility classes. They can go ahead and change colors however they see fit. You could argue this is a terrible editing experience because they'll destroy your designs, but I feel like for those who have a keen eye for design, it's quite beneficial and gives you a bit more control over the look and feel of your site. So that's style components and ACF and Gutenberg. Um, yeah, have a play around with it, build your own style components, and you'll learn as you build more components.